Faith family, it's Monday, day one of our week-long look at the book of Leviticus, uh, specifically chapter 23. You know, a lot of times as New Testament believers, we think about the Old Testament and we don't really think of it being necessary to our life, but it, of course, is a foundation uh, for the, the truths that are really brought to reality in the New Testament, especially the prophecies about Jesus. And when we think about the book of Leviticus, it's really set, uh, set aside as a book that was providing details to the people and to the religious leaders of how to worship God and, and what specific worship they would incorporate on what specific days. And the idea that we're going to be looking at this week is how God instructed his people to celebrate certain festivals. And these festivals were set up for the specific purpose of looking back to an event where God had acted in such a miraculous and marvelous way in the life of the people. And they were to look back on that and remember God's faithfulness, and it should then prompt them to also be faithful as well. And so today we're looking specifically at Leviticus chapter 23, verses 4 through 8, which say, These are the Lord's appointed times, the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed times. The Passover to the Lord comes in the first month at twilight on the 14th day of the month. The festival of unleavened bread to the Lord is on the 15th day of the same month. For seven days you must eat unleavened bread. On the first day you are to hold a sacred assembly. You are not to do any daily work. You are to present a fire offering to the Lord for seven days. On the seventh day there will be a sacred assembly. Do not do any daily work. So here are two events that are connected to one another. The first one being Passover, and of course we know that was a foreshadowing of our own celebration of the crucifixion of Christ, because he is the Passover lamb. But for the Jew, that looked back to that just that miraculous deliverance that came. Israel was in bondage to Egypt, cried out to the Lord, the Lord responded and delivered them. And the way he did that was through the 10th plague, which came to them as Passover, because in that plague, God sent the death angel. And when the death angel did not see blood marking the outside of the house correctly, he would go in and kill the firstborn male. And so Passover for them represented that time when God brought judgment, but he passed over and protected the people. And connected with that is the way that Egypt responded to that Passover, which was to force the people out. They immediately asked Israel, say, leave, leave now. And so the unleavened bread portion is to symbolize the fact that the bread didn't even have time to go through that leaven process and to rise because the people were commanded to get their stuff and get out. And so it, to me, I think there's also more significance as well because leaven oftentimes in scripture represents the world and its influence. So to be unleavened is to be set apart from. And so one aspect of that celebration was where they would recognize that they had been set apart from, as God's chosen people. They were special, significant. And so the Bible even says here that God commanded seven days. They are to go about that. Sacrificing each day is a sign of worship and appreciation to God, having, having been set apart by God from all the nations of the world to be his chosen people. And of course, for us, we started the week off yesterday. Brother Aaron leading us through several more script, uh, verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 as we think about the resurrection. And that's one of the celebrations that we as New Testament believers hold on to. We hold on to the, the death and the resurrection of Christ, the celebration of Easter. We also hold and celebrate the birth of Christ, being Christmas. And so there's two events that are two miraculous events that God initiated alone for our own benefit that we look back and celebrate. And so as you look through these verses, let's not get bogged down the fact that these are instructions for Old Testament believers. And that's one of the reasons why I think our writer asked the following question. Number one, what helps you remember the good things God's done for you? And that's what those festivals were designed to do, to remember and to celebrate the, the good things that God had done for Israel. And the same is true for us. We look back at the resurrection and we celebrate the good thing that God did by providing the avenue of life. Even though we were dead in our sins and trespasses, we are now alive in Christ. And we have the promise that if we die physically, we will experience eternal life with him in heaven because of the resurrection of Jesus. So think about that. What helps you remember that? Uh, Maybe it's a special book. Maybe it's a location. Maybe it's a certain song. Maybe it's a person. Think through that and think about how significant those times, those events, those activities were for you. Number two, how can you connect these feasts with your own life? 
And I've kind of already given you some indicators of that in that for New Testament believers, we look back on the birth of God, of Christ and we recognize that that was God's way of showing his love for us and leaving the glory and splendor of heaven, the second person of the Trinity, and coming to dwell with us here on earth. And of course, we also look back on the death of our Lord on that Friday, we call it Good Friday, being the payment of the penalty for our sin, and then um, also the Resurrection Sunday, being the first day of the week, the week we now, we, we recognize it every week, because we celebrate on Sunday, not Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath. And so, we'll talk through some more of these things, uh, what are some other key events, significant events for you personally, or maybe for you as a family, where God did something miraculous, marvelous for you, and how do you commemorate that? How do you remember that? So work through those, and as always, remember, live sin.